Jenny of Jenny Stitches. I hope you are all well and almost ready for Christmas. Where does the time go? How are we halfway through December, like a week away from Christmas? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> things have been really busy around here and obviously, yeah, I'm sure you don't need me to explain. <laughs> but I did want to pop on and film this little video for you because I made a party dress. <laughs> So for context, um, I had a Christmas party to attend this year, which I was not expecting to have to attend, which was nice. Um, and I wasn't really fussed about making something. I thought I'll go shopping. And I went shopping with my husband uh, one weekend. We went to Preston and it was awful. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I don't even know where to begin really but um, I guess one of the things about sewing and being able to sew and having a fabric shop means that you become a little bit more discerning about sort of fabric choices and ready to wear clothes and the way that things are put together and yeah there's just there was just nothing that grabbed my eye and anything that I did kind of like the look of was really expensive and I thought you know what on the way home even my husband said you're gonna have to make something so that is what I did. Now then, being Christmas, I'm all about embracing the sparkle. So I really wanted to have a go at sequins. Um, I've had this sequin fabric in for a little while now and I've got it in two colourways. This is champagne. I'm try and roll a bit to show you. There we go. You can see it's a matte sequin. And I've also got it in silver. So, a little bit about sewing with sequins. Um, I think a lot of people can be intimidated by working with sequins, but it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. There's just a few sort of tips and tricks to bear in mind and you take your time. And it's like sewing any other fabric, really. Um, so sequins come in different types of bases. Um, Sorry, we've got a door trier there. Um, and these, this particular fabric is a three millimeter sequin and it's an all over sequin. So the entire fabric is covered in it. And if you looked very closely, and I'm not sure if, if you can pick that up on there, they're kind of in a wiggly pattern. So they are stitched down in little groups um, onto a, like a mesh base. So I'll show you the back there. So it's actually quite, a durable sort of woven fabric and when you first cut them you're going to get bits of sequins everywhere because you're cutting those little strings and you're cutting the sequins in half and yeah <laughs> there's no way to dress it up sequins get everywhere so I really liked this matte champagne colour I didn't think it was it's sparkly but not too sparkly and um, so I decided to pair it with the sew over it ultimate shift dress now I would say if you are going to sew with sequins, probably one of the number one things is to not pick a complicated design, which this isn't. Obviously, it's a straight up and down dress. Technically, it has no closure, but we'll come on to that. Um, and it just has bust art, so there's no sort of complex shaping involved. You've not got loads of seams to worry about because the last thing you want to be doing is adding a lot of bulk and a lot of internal seams that might be scratchy and uncomfortable. <clears throat> so yes the ultimate shift dress and this is my first time making this pattern I haven't tried it before so I had to do a bit of fitting work um, which I'll just explain I made a twirl and the first thing that I had to do was make a narrow shoulder adjustment so I kind of hold that pattern piece up there and I'll pop a link below to the instructions that I have used um, but yeah, I'm quite like, narrow here, so I had to take half an inch out of each shoulder. I think on reflection maybe a little bit more next time, but that kind of lifts the sleeve cap up to where it needs to be. And I also had to add 
um, I had to do a large bicep adjustment. So I sort of have a small frame around here, but then I kind of store body fat on the top of my arms. So I have quite a chunky upper arm, but small torso, if you will. So um, again, I will link below the adjustment that I made, but I had to put two inches of extra width into the sleeve because when I tried to twirl on, I couldn't actually pull the sleeves up at all. So I'm actually really pleased that I've learned how to do that adjustment because it's one of those fit adjustments that's always eluded me so far. And there is a particular dress in my wardrobe that I'm now looking at and thinking, can I put some new sleeves on that dress? <laughs> so I'm pleased that that's been done. So once I've picked my pattern and got the fit sorted on the twirl, it's time to cut out. Now, the thing to note when you're working with sequin fabric is that it will blunt your scissors <laughs> because essentially you're cutting up plastic. So that's never gonna do your good fabric scissors a lot of good. So some people opt to use household paper scissors. Um, I just used a pair of ordinary fabric shears that I knew would need sharpening. I have, obviously I've got several sets in here and I have a pair that have a bit of a nicking and are ready for sharpening. So I've used those and they've got a little sticker on. <clears throat> so, you know, that was okay. I was all right with that. Um, some people will cut sequins with a rotary cutter. You can do that as well, but also you've got to bear in mind that you probably will blunt the blade. Um, and also when cutting out, you want to have right sides together just to avoid things flying up and you kind of keep that control. So, um, some people will recommend, and I've seen it about taking the sequins off where the seam allowance is going to be. I didn't do that because this just being a three millimeter seam allowance, um, sorry, a three, <laughs> a three millimeter sequin, um, it wasn't really necessary. It doesn't add so much bulk to the seams that that it was needed so I've just left that as it is um, and for this particular fabric I was able to press on a cool iron with a press cloth and to me a press cloth is usually a handy tea towel because I'm that technical. Um, so there were a couple of departures that I made from the actual pattern and the first of which was to add a lining so I used, I'm trying to turn her around, um, a camel coloured lining which on its own looks awful. When I made it up and tried it on I thought if I just made a sack but um, it was fine. <laughs> but that just sort of sets off the sequins nicely. I think it's arguable whether you would actually need to line this particular fabric. It is sheer but it's not overly sheer. Um, I guess you could just wear a slip underneath if you wanted to or maybe like a, a cami if you were just wearing a top. But I have had customers take some to make tops where they're just wearing a flesh colour bra and they're not going to it's not going to be so see through that it's really an issue. So it's kind of down to personal choice. Um, but I wanted a lining in just because it was a full dress. If it was a top, maybe I wouldn't be as fussed, but I wanted to line it. And I've given the second departure away there. I inserted a invisible zip, which as you can see is there. Um, you don't need to do that. I mean, I can just pull this off the mannequin and technically with this pattern, you can just pull it over your head. But the idea of pulling sequins up and over my hair and face and everything, especially after quite a bit of Prosecco, yeah, I just thought I'd put a zip in. But I was able to insert the zip in the normal fashion. I didn't even have to take any sequins off the, um, seam allowance there so it was all really straightforward to be honest so I'm really pleased with how it's gone together. Um, one other very important tip I would share when working with the sequins is not to overlock. It's a surefire way to <laughs> ruin your overlocker. Um, some sequin fabrics can be directional. This one I don't think it is. If it is, it's not obvious to me and that's absolutely fine. Um, oh, another little thing I'll show you was on the hem. You might actually have to take the dress off to do this. Um, 
can see, I just finished the hem with some satin bias tape. And this was something that my mum suggested actually, because I don't know if, if you've ever owned a sequin dress and worn it with tights. Sometimes that turned underside catches against your tights and snags them. So I popped that on just for comfort really, and just another nice little finish. So yeah, all in all, I'm just gonna get her dressed again. Some dignity there, Diana. Um, all in all, it was a very simple sew. I was really pleased with the pattern and I'm also now, I have the ultimate shift dressed pattern fitted to me. So I can go on and make some other shift dresses, which will be nice for summer. Um, a shift dress is actually probably one of the most commonly asked for patterns that I get in the shop. A lot of ladies like to make a simple shift and it's a fantastic beginner's pattern because obviously if you take it just as it's designed, um, there's very minimal sort of techniques involved. You have bust starts, but there's no zip, no closure necessary with the pattern. And as patterns go, it's actually a, a great little basic because you get the dress and there is the option to make a top as well. And you can, there's different sleeve lengths. I went with a three quarter sleeve, but you can have a short sleeve and a long sleeve and of course sleeveless. Um, I will pop some links below to some of the resources that I found really useful when I was making this dress. Um, in particular, Lisa Comfort of Sew Over It has a sew along on her YouTube channel where she was making an ultimate shift top with lace. So it was a lining with a lace overlay and essentially that's what I did here really, but instead of lace it was a sequin mesh. So, um, Have I got any other top tips here? I don't think I do. but. I think the most important thing to take away from it is that things aren't in as intimidating as they seem. Um, let me know if you've got any more questions. Um, obviously that was a sort of very whistle stop tour through it, but I just wanted to show you the dress. Um, I will try and put in a couple of awful mirror selfies of me wearing it. Um, but it was very comfortable and there was plenty of room for dinner, which was important because there was free courses and it was lovely. And we had a very nice evening and drank far too much wine and I had a terrible headache the next day but it's nice to kind of be doing social things again so I'm not complaining. <laughs> anyway, have you sewn with sequins before? Let me know in the comments if you have and if you've got any more top tips feel free to share um, but I thought you might just enjoy that little insight into my sequin sewing journey. Um, I hope you're well. I am hoping to get the Christmas window video up this next week before we finish for Christmas, the shop closes on Thursday the 23rd. Um, I'm not open on Christmas Eve and then I will be taking a nice long break over Christmas with my family and we will be back open on Tuesday the 5th of January, I think. Um, I will confirm that. Um, yeah, so if I, I will try and get that video up next week. But if you don't catch that, have a wonderful Christmas holiday. And thank you very much for watching. And thank you for all your support this year. Um, I will be doing a sort of year end roundup soon, but wow, <laughs> what a crazy one it's been. Anyway, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you soon. Thank you.